Well, thanks so much for coming out and sharing a little bit about camp and your experience here. What's your earliest experience or memory here at Camp Mac? Uh, I came to Camp Mac as an adult. So I did not grow up in Indiana. I grew up in Southern California and my camp was Camp Laverne. Mm. So the first time I came to Camp Mac, I just couldn't believe there was a camp in the middle of a cornfield. <laughs> uh, in my world, you had to go up in the mountains to go to camp. Uh, but. So my first experience of camp was Labor Day family camp, uh, and that was with a three-week-old infant, which was <laughs> quite the experience. Mm -hmm. uh, but my congregation, Elkhart City Creekside, um, had been very supportive of camp, uh, so I was happy to be there for that. And uh, I have come to appreciate a camp that uh, you don't have to go away in order to get to. The accessibility of Camp Mac has been something that's been wonderful for me and my family. Nice. So your, was that your oldest kid that came as a three month old? No, it was my youngest. Your youngest, yep. okay. So all your kids have been able to come to Camp Mac over the years. Yep. And were any of them on staff here ever? No, my husband was on staff. My husband, Tim, was on staff when he was in uh, college. Uh, actually, the summer I met him, he was working on Camp Mac staff. I understand there was a pond here named after me at one point, but uh, <laughs> it's probably long gone now. Um, but our kids did uh, summer camp programming. Uh, they all did camp all through school. Uh, my older kids were not yet school age when we moved up here. Uh, so it's, camp has been a place that our whole family has experienced in one way or another. Thanks. So one way I know you've been involved with camp the last few years was through our different spiritual retreats and activities. So for those who might not know what we've offered, Tell us about how you've been involved with that corner of Camp Mac. Yeah, my involvement has been through the Women Creating Community Groups. Uh, I served as a leader one year and then as a participant for other years. And um, that's just been, it's, it's never exactly the same group of people, uh, but it has been, the relationships in there have been really meaningful to me. Um, when you have a group of six or eight or 10 women and you get together once a month over a period of nine months or so, uh, significant things happen in people's lives. Uh, grandchildren are born, parents pass away, there are things that happen, weddings or you know, kids going to college. And having that group as a group for support through those things um, in one of those years, uh, actually the year that I was leading, I had some significant things happen professionally um, and I had some personal things that were significant. So the support of that group was really important to me. I am also someone who believes in uh, having contemplative time and it's amazing how difficult that is to carve out. Mm -hmm. uh, so having a day a month, um, it would seem like every time that day would come up, I would think, oh, I don't have time to do this. Um, that's even when I was leading it. <laughs> but I think, uh, no, I'll just go and leave early or whatever I need to do. And uh, making that intentional space, uh, not only to be with other people, but to have time for myself, I always finished those days, and I never left early, uh, but I always finished those days so grateful that I'd had that opportunity. And camp is like the ideal place to do that. It's a great mix of uh, being able to have lunch together and see mm -hmm. other people, but also having uh, places where you can walk by yourself um, in whatever season it was, uh, those were really good experiences for me and I connected with some wonderful people through that. Cool. So you brought up walking around camp and exploring camp. Mm -hmm. Is there a corner of camp that you've been able to explore during some, during any time really, 
that you think more people should explore or visit? Any hidden gems out there? Oh, I don't think it's very well hidden. Probably <laughs> the Living Cross is someplace that was always a destination walk because it was far enough to feel like you got away from the buildings and things at camp, um, but not so far that you worried about getting lost. Mm -hmm. um, as part of our Women Creating Community group, um, we had people who would hike, uh, would regularly cross Camp Mac Road and mm -hmm. hike in the woods on the other side. And often we'd have a uh, quiet time in the morning when we were on our own. And then uh, one year they came back, a couple people came back at lunch and said, it was springtime, you have mm -hmm. to go out and see the wildflowers there. And so that afternoon after lunch, we all walked over with our cameras and took pictures oh, of, the, of the wildflowers of Trillium and such mm -hmm. over there. And it was uh, often as part of those times, people would come back with stories of a particular tree that they'd go to and have their quiet yeah. time and look for it like through the months of the mm -hmm. year to see how it changed. Oh, fun. Yeah, there's so many beautiful and just serene places. And that's one thing you really have gotten to enjoy camp throughout the seasons, mm -hmm. not just as a summer camp or anything like that. Yeah, I was, I think I have been at some event at camp in every month of the year. <laughs> um, and it's, it's, there's always something beautiful and inspiring here, even nice. if it's just the people. <laughs> <laughs> So in the last few years, you've taken Camp Mac with you, literally, I would say, in the ministry that you all do at Creekside Church of the Brethren. How did that relationship get started and what's, what's been that connection between Camp Mac and Creekside? So I'm the pastor of Creekside Church of the Brethren. It's in Elkhart, so half a mile, or um, 20 minutes, uh, 20 miles, uh, a little further than that to drive. And uh, Camp Mac uh, has partnered with us in a garden ministry. We have some property on our church property that we have used in cooperation with Church Community Services, which is an Elkhart uh, County program. They have a food pantry and they were looking for more fresh food options for that. And they have a program called Seed to Feed where community gardens can raise fresh produce to donate to them or farmers can donate a portion of their produce. So uh, we raised produce at Creekside for that. And uh, then we expanded that ministry into a container garden ministry. Uh, there are some food deserts around mm -hmm. our uh, Elkhart County Church location. Uh, we found people through the Council on Aging and ADEC and Oaklawn Psychiatric uh, Center and uh, have taken uh, container gardens there. And as part of that ministry, we built a greenhouse on our church property in order to start seeds for those containers mm -hmm. and for some of the things that we plant out in our garden. And we had conversation with Kristen Whirling, who was then just starting on the Camp Max staff, about how we could do some educational programming for children. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kristen came up with the proposal for a kids' garden club uh, and found homeschool kids in Elkhart County area. They have started seeds in our greenhouse uh, and planted them in a portion of our gardens at Creekside and met in 12 week sessions uh, to take care of that garden, uh, to learn about planting and weeding and harvesting, but also to work in the kitchen at Creekside, uh, to learn about dehydrating food. Um, I think they had a jelly making day. Uh, so these are not children who regularly attend our church, uh, but these are kids who are there every week through the growing season. Um, we have appreciated Kristen's hard work with that. Um, the first years of that were when uh, programming at Camp Mac was limited because of COVID and an outdoor ministry like that was something that we could continue uh, even, uh, even with those limitations. 
So we were so grateful to be able to continue to be a presence in our community mm -hmm. and to have a partnership with Camp Mac, uh, even through those limitations. And oh, that's, nice. we're already in conversation about uh, what we're gonna be planting uh, for this season. Excellent. So with all that program and that relationship, how has that helped Creekside to grow? Or whether that's in numbers or just in spirit? Well. Um, first of all, it, <laughs> it's really easy to talk about growth when you're talking about garden ministries so true. because things are growing all the time. Mm -hmm. um, those garden work days are not things that the entire congregation participates in, but once a week people get together and work out in our gardens. Um, soon after we started that uh, seed to feed ministry with church community services, there was a planner there who figured out um, our church is less than two miles away from the county jail. Hmm. And uh, she got freezer space at the county jail. We have grown varieties of tomatoes, uh, which can be frozen, uh, just fresh when they're fresh, they don't have to be heat processed or anything. Hmm. And uh, so we have donated over a ton of tomatoes every year that we have done that. And that, um, uh, because they can't give away that many fresh tomatoes from mm -hmm. their food pantry. Uh, but that has been, we've invited people from other congregations, people from the community. We've had sorority groups come in mm -hmm. and help harvest or process tomatoes. It is work that nearly anybody can do. Um, you're sitting down inside a building. Uh, even during COVID, we were able to put picnic tables outside. Um, we have felt like uh, it is a sign of how God sends growth, whatever your circumstances are. If you are, if you take the opportunity uh, to to step into those relationships and mm -hmm. those opportunities to connect with other people and to serve your community. It's been a terrific program for yeah, us. Yeah, that's so, so you've given literally a ton of tomatoes. Every year. I wow. mean, tons of, so probably <laughs> over the course of that uh, ministry and freezing that, we've probably done six or eight tons of tomatoes. Wow. That's a lot of tomatoes. That's a lot. <laughs> that's so cool though, especially the connection with the jail and being able to give them some fresh produce. So in all the ways you're involved in Camp Mac, and for how long you've been involved now, because you said your youngest, three months old, I can, I can do that math. 25 years. That, that's a lot of, lot of time that you've spent here, even though you didn't come as a camper. Mm -hmm. So what excites you about the future of Camp Mac? As you look in the next few years, what makes you excited about what's coming? I think Camp Mac has uh, gotten great leadership and great staff. Uh, I had the opportunity uh, this past spring and summer uh, to serve on a team to talk about goal setting at Camp Mac. I think it's been great that they have reached out to their constituents, not just church members, but community members, and of course the staff here at camp uh, to talk about the direction that camp could go. Uh, I was part of a group that was talking about ministries that could involve community members more. Mm -hmm. I know even with my family, it got increasingly challenging to carve out weeks in the summer when kids could go to camp once they started to get involved in other activities. So having things that uh, people can come and do weekend workshops. Um, ways to involve older adults and senior citizens, uh, I think are terrific ways to use the beautiful facilities and grounds that are here at camp. Awesome. Do you have any especially fond memories or stories of your experience here at Camp Mac that you'd like to share? Um, <laughs> I remember the first time that we took our oldest child, our daughter, uh, Katie and brought her for samplers camp and I shouldn't say we because it was me that came down <laughs> with the three kids um, 
Katie and her sister who was too young to go to camp and her brother who was too young to know what was going on. Um, so Katie was nervous about being dropped off for her first day, uh, her first time being away for an overnight at camp. Uh, Becca was upset because she didn't get to stay and Joel was upset because everybody else was upset and uh, just remember that experience of three Waylon kids at camp and dropping Katie off and saying it's gonna be okay and telling Becca you'll get your turn and strapping Joel in the car seat and just hoping he would fall asleep on the way home so uh, Katie did have a great time at that samplers camp. Uh, they all got an opportunity to come back when they were later, uh, but it is something that has shaped our family uh, since my kids were young, and I hope that their kids will be able to come back here as campers. Nice. Yeah, I was just kind of doing the math of, you'll be eligible to come for grand camp in a few years sometime we have our grandkid our oldest grandchild is three and a half now so excellent well thank you so much for sharing your memories and stories and for all you do for our mission and ministry here at camp mac you're welcome